There's been bumps in the road for sure. You know, there's been times in schools where a caretaker perhaps uh, really doesn't appreciate that we bring muddy shoes into the school and it will turn into a drama. These things happen and I've heard other people talk about it. There's been, um, sometimes it's hard to, to really, to always make sure that things are gonna happen that need to. Like say you're starting seedlings in the school and you really, really, really need to make sure that they're gonna be watered. Everyone's trying to do the best they can, but teachers are spread pretty thin in the schools, you know? So sometimes one time they'll forget, but it will just happen to be the one time it was a long weekend and you'll lose some seedlings. And I mean, there's, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can really do. You can, you know, you, you try to work around it in other ways and try different models, you know, maybe bigger seedling trays and different things. So um, there's, there's issues that can come in with funding and different things like that. There's sometimes there's, there's been examples where schools have had contaminated soil and uh, at one school they discovered contaminated soil there so they had to completely pull up the garden, build, you know, raised planter boxes, replant everything. So those kind of things are, can, be, can be a pretty big issue. Um, and there's been other times where you're planting a garden and you're, you're waiting to do it and all of a sudden they're like, we're going to do construction on the building the whole year. Uh, if there's going to be bricks and dust all over your garden, you, you can't even garden there that year. And it's just sometimes the communication doesn't always come down the line to me, you know, in a way that gives me enough time to really see that coming. And so that can be an issue because it's new to the schools. Um, those, are, those are kind of some of the main things that I can think of. Um, but I'd say it's been pretty smooth in the most part. I don't think this is how it works in every school board. I've had a lot of people from the, from the French school board in Montreal contact me and say, how do you manage to do this at all these schools? We can't even get one single planter box at our schools. So there's a lot more, I think, um, uh, like tape to go through in the, in the French school board than in the English Montreal school board. It seems to be more relaxed about you know, trying these experiments in schools and building these gardens. And it should be because really these kind of things, if, if truly they had to be stopped in any school, it can be dismantled and put back to how it was. It's not, it's not a forever thing. It doesn't have to be a forever thing. So, I'm, you know, I'm a little surprised that, that other schools are so resistant to these. Our school boards are so resistant to this. I haven't personally talked with any of these people. I just hear it from teachers and it seems to be recurring that it's not always so easy as the, what we've had. So it definitely helps to, for me in the position I am, to be working within the school board because I have access to people and, te and principals because I'm their colleague that I know that other parents and stuff, when they try to start a school garden, it's not as easy. But sometimes the long-term result is really good when you have a community start a garden. It's like, it's kind of more, I think it's more guaranteed because it's less, even though I work within the school, it is, it sometimes does feel a little top-down like, because we'll kind of come and say, we want to start a garden and most schools will say, you know, yeah, I would love that, but they're not really always prepared to necessarily start the garden or take care of it long term because they don't really understand what, what it is. They just know that that sounds like a great idea, you know, or a principal would be like, oh, that would look really good for my school, which I understand why someone would want to do that, but it's not always the best for long term. So that's why the, the greatest examples of school gardens that have been successful seem to have started when literally the community starts them you know or the, or the staff that's sticking around long term because they're there every day whereas I'm only at the school once twice a week.